Visitors to Fort Gibraltar looking to get out of the cold can always find a fire and a good story burning here. All made by hand, that's right. When you come here today, uh, you'll actually be stepping back in time to the year 1815, so a few years after it was built. And you'll be able to visit with and, and chat with the different people that would have been here during that period. This is the blacksmith shop. Um, this is where basically everything that you see in the fort that was made out of, uh, handmade out of, uh, out of steel or metal was, was made. If you needed something repaired, this was the place to come. While this blacksmith is showing off his artistic flares, the items of the day would have been much more practical. At the time in the 1800s, this, uh, this forge was actually uh, famous for its nails. Lots and lots of nails. They made very like simple things, trade goods, um, things like uh, things like this, like a little uh, muskrat spears, um, arrowheads, uh, blades for crooked knives, blades for knives, um, that, that sort of thing. When it comes to the time of the voyageur, a lot of people think about that big burly man and that big burly beard, but my own beard growing abilities are a little bit lacking, so I'm going to head into Entrepot or the storehouse to find out how hard the women were working. One of the things that a lot of people don't know is that women did most of the fishing and also supplemented the diet by catching small game through snares, so any kind of um, partridges or hares and things like that and fish were all caught by the women. Also the collection of wild rice and berry picking and mushrooms, all women's work. Métis women like these would also smoke or dry food, a necessary fuel for the fur trade brigades themselves. The provisions for the voyageurs on those trips were looked after by this guy, a Northwest Company partner who also manned the trading post. Uh, we're looking for everything from beaver fur right over to this uh, very fancy little guy here, uh, which we don't talk about very much. Uh, these are ermine. Uh, if people ask about these, what would they use a little tiny fur like this for? Well, if you see a coronation, capes for the Queen or people in the House of Lords, that white cape they're wearing with all the little black tips on it, that's what these are. So these are a quite valuable little guy. In a life built around commerce and trade, everything within these walls depended on the paddling and portaging of the voyageur. It's quite a, it's a hard life. They're working hard. Um, these voyageurs would sign on for two to three year contracts to work for the company. Uh, if you're not paddling goods uh, in canoes back and forth, uh, goods and furs, uh, you'll be stationed at a fort. You'll be called what, uh, what we know them as, as, a, as an hivernant or a winterer. Everything within this fort has to do with business. So this cabin is the men's cabin. So all the staff, lower class men are staying here over winter because that's part of our contract. So that come springtime, someone is here to take the bales out to Fort William. And then once we get to Fort William in a couple months from, uh, from our departure, we'll have a big rendezvous, meet with other voyageurs that are coming out from the east, bringing in the goods from England. We'll swap goods and then bring them back to our respective forts. If this was full of something, can you push that? You've got a job on the dock, okay? Goods from this region would eventually be shipped overseas, and that meant work for hundreds of thousands of coopers on both sides of the ocean. There was not plastic, there weren't forklifts, there was not uh, cardboard, there wasn't containers. Everything that had to be moved had to be moved by muscle power. To make these, though, the trade of the cooper came about. The cooper also would make a form of cooper, would make, called the white cooper, would make household items and industrial things like buckets, tubs, churns. Interpretations like these have become an integral part of Fort Gibraltar. Costume like this, it's a tool, right? It's a way for us to share that history with people and to engage them. If you can get someone to say, oh, wow, I didn't know whatever it was, you've got them thinking about it, and, and that's really important. That's a very important way for us to share our culture and, and heritage with everyone around here. And this is probably going to take dishes, cups, peas, tobacco, corn, could be anything. The leather and the furs are great to keep you warm in the, in the winter time, but in the summer time. Hi. Whether it's inside the fort or around the festival grounds, history has come to life once again at the Festival du Voyageur. For Go Winnipeg, I'm Kim Kasher.